Today, I'm joined by Hugh Sargent, the Elite Racing Manager of the River and Mercantile UK Recovery Fund. Hugh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, good to uh, be with you this morning. Hugh, I mean, it's, it's very interesting times at the moment, volatile markets. I believe that's the sort of environment you like. Uh, have you been very active with the portfolio recently? Uh, I mean, volatility uh, often creates opportunities, and, and um, those are our bread and butter, I suppose, you know, recovery PVT opportunities, and this sort of environment is is providing more opportunities. Um, the market's obviously volatile in the context of, you know, moving away from this deflation and low interest rate environment to more reflationary, inflationary, higher interest rate environment, and that's creating a lot of uncertainty. Uncertainty equals volatility equals equals opportunities. Um, but we're being gradualist, I would say. So, you know, key areas that we're looking to add more capital would be some of the consumer cyclicals that have derated aggressively, industrial cyclicals that have uh, derated uh, aggressively. So, from our perspective, that equals equals an opportunity. Just in general, uh, you know, UK equities um, and many global equities, uh, amazing value at the moment. So this portfolio, UK recovery, is trading on only 10 times earnings. So I do see it as an exciting time in terms of uh, buying stocks cheaply. And I believe you've added Close Brothers recently. What is it about that which? Um, what is it about that stock which you like? But yeah, we have been uh, again gradually uh, building a, a, a position. That's in the context of us putting capital, more capital to work in into the lenders, the the, the banks, uh, UK banks, uh, domestic banks, and also uh, the the Asian uh, Asian banks, uh, UK banks. We see as you know, very attractively valued. Uh, interest rates are going up, so their net interest margin should. Uh, be able to improve in that environment, uh, despite you know more favourable background. The banks have actually derated because the market's worried about the credit cycle. We actually think the credit cycle will be um, more relatively benign compared to previous economic downturns. So we see that as a real opportunity. Uh, Close Brothers, um, though it's not just a lender, it's obviously got the wealth management business and, and winter floods, uh, but it's been derated. I think in the context of you know worries about the UK. Uh, UK lending uh, environment, and we do see that as as a big opportunity. And actually, if you look at the Close Brothers valuation, it trades at just around one times tangible book value. You have to go back to the the depth of the global financial crisis for that kind of low valuation. So when things were were particularly uh, bad, you know, Close has over the years been able to generate attractive return on capital and be far less cyclical than other other lenders. And we really don't think that's reflected in a very low valuation of only one times book. And what gives you that confidence that the credit cycle is going to be benign? Because everyone's got quite negative at the moment. You know, the consumer is supposed to be struggling in, with inflation, you know, higher energy prices, etc. So, I mean, there's quite a lot of nervousness out there. Yeah, and I think that you know the nervousness is is understandable in the context of you know a different regime, a more clearly more inflationary uh, regime. Our, our own view would be some of the while we've for two to three years we've been in the reflation camp, and that you know in, low interest rates weren't going to be around forever more. Uh, we're not in the camp of you know inflation getting out of control. So we do think some of the current uh, inflationary uh, pressures will prove to be a little bit cyclical. So those will start to start to peak. Our key observation on the credit cycle with respect to banks is that you know they haven't really uh, um, uh, been aggressive lenders over the last ten plus years. Ever since the global financial crisis, the banks have actually essentially been pretty cautious. Often they've been, you need they've they've been required to delever, um, and as a result of that, um, they they. Uh, should have pretty strong, uh, strong credit. Their balance sheets are very strong. They've got excess uh, capital. If you look at the Lloyd's, you know a lot of its lending is against, um, you know, housing assets, and obviously house prices have been very strong. So, it's those reasons that we're actually, um, you know, think to think the credit cycle will be relatively, uh, relatively benign, and understand the short-term uh, pressures on on the consumer, and understand why. You know, some of those consumer stocks have been derated, but we do think um, the, the actual consumer is probably in a little bit of a better position than the current, um, you know, real fears, uh, think. And the reasons for that is that, 
you know, the consumer balance sheet is is strong. So they've um, um, there's been quite a, a significant wealth effect from house prices moving up. Um, uh, employment uh, prospects have, have remained very robust. Um, and actually, there is um, a positive of wage inflation in that, you know, there is a little bit more cash going into the consumer's pockets. And then they obviously saved a lot during during lockdown and not all that saving has been spent. So I think they're just in a little bit better position than common, very, very gloomy consensus assumes. Yeah. And I believe you're in, getting interested in real estate stocks at the moment. Is that the real estate investment trusts or, or, or building companies or, or both? A little bit of both. Um, I mean, we're interested in real estate. We've been adding to it because we see it as as you know a good inflation uh, a good inflation hedge. So you should have good inflation protection there in terms of you know the value of of real estate. Um, and and then the valuations are quite attractive because a lot of the stocks have, have come back on you know because of the same concerns about you know the UK domestic um, outlook in terms of the economic background. Um, so there's been that element of uncertainty, which has uh, led the shares to be relatively weak. So good inflation hedge plus, you know, an attractive entry point in terms of valuations. Um, you know, key stocks that we like would be Capital and Counties, which owns the Covent Garden, and actually Shaftesbury as well. We've got a, a decent position, and there, there's a proposed merger on on the table of those two businesses, Shaftesbury being the operator of uh, much of uh, Carnaby Street and, and parts of Soho. Uh, and we do see the combination of those two um, would, would make a very attractive uh, real estate franchise. If they don't combine, you know, separately, they're also very attractive. Uh, the likes of Covent Garden, um, actually seeing you know footfall which is higher than uh, pre uh, the pre uh, COVID pre pandemic, so the fundamentals are actually very strong uh, at the moment. Despite that, you know the shares um, have been have been laggards. They traded a big discount to to, to N- NAV, and that NAV's you know had to be haircut over the last couple of uh, couple of years, as as valuers have taken more cautious assumptions you know during the during the lockdown period. So we see that as really uh, attractive uh, British land as well as another one that we see as attractive and been adding uh, capital to. It's got some interesting um, development projects and interesting pipeline with respect to being able to create value from development and also trades cheap versus its its NAV. And Shell and BP are two of your biggest holdings. Uh, they've obviously done very well for you recently. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole windfall tax? Is is that does that is that material at all, or, or is that well in the price now? And what are your thoughts for those stocks going forward? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not really material for the, the big oil majors for for BP and and, and Shell. Uh, the North Sea is not a huge part of their um, of their asset uh, asset base. I mean, obviously, it will won't encourage them to make the North Sea a larger part of their asset base. So, we, we um, as you'd expect. <laughs> us to say are not very supportive of uh, the windfall tax. It was clearly largely a political uh, statement. It will probably discourage uh, investment. Uh, you know, just at a time when the UK needs to be more self-sufficient in in carbon production. So not supportive uh, of it. But it doesn't have a major impact on 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 Shell and BP. We do actually have quite material positions in in Harbour and um, uh, you know some other uh, EMP. Uh, Stocks which have been more um, uh, more in, more impacted. Harbour's share price is down over twenty percent uh, since the announcement. We see that as an overreaction because there are things that Harbour can do. It has got an investment uh, program uh, lined up, and uh, that will be able to offset some of the tax hit. And there's probably um, you know as well as organic investment, there's probably an opportunity for further inorganic so consolidation of. Uh, consolidation of the producers in in, in the North Sea uh, to offset some of those um, you know tax pressures. So we do see there's an opportunity that you know significant drawdown in the harbour share price to add to our positions. And what are your thoughts for the overall market outlook from here? Well, we you know been pretty bullish, I suppose. I mean, we're bullish because valuations, starting valuations, are, are very modest. UK. Market trading on, you know, less than eleven times uh, uh, earnings. 
and our portfolio trading at a discount to that. So we're trading on sort of, you know, probably 10 times earnings. We're trading on a price to book of 1.3 times, you know, high free cash flow yield. Um, so attractive starting valuations. And then the portfolio we have should be able to, you know, grow profits and cash flow at a robust pace over the next, you know, two to two to five uh, years. So low starting valuation um, and, um, you know, attractive medium term growth. We was exposed to a lot of recovery, classic recovery type stocks where profitability is not at peak. It's still quite depressed and recovering. So that was that element to come through. I mean, obviously, it is an uncertain time and, and that uncertainty is not going to go away uh, tomorrow. We would see probably the key catalyst to reduce um, to temper some of that uncertainty would be, you know, in, in short term inflation numbers uh, peaking. Don't quite know when that will be. Probably some point in, um, you know, through the, the second half of the year, we'll see a, see a peaking in short term inflation numbers. And I think that would act as a catalyst for for some, you know, reduced uncertainty and for equities to to, to rally in that context. I mean, we've, you know, as a value and recovery manager, we've been relatively defensive in, you know, this drawdown period, clearly um, in longer duration type investments, growth investments have been uh, more aggressively impacted. Small and mid cap have also been weak. Um, we have actually, you know, there are some um, quality stocks that may have been derated too aggressively. So we've been looking to add capital to some, some of those. Uh, likewise, uh, small and mid caps have been very weak, and we see that as a, as an opportunity to add add capital. So it's so all in. We're you know we're pretty optimistic about attractive equity returns over the medium term from here. That's been really interesting, you. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts today. Great, thanks. Thanks for your questions, James. And if you'd like to learn more about the River and Mercantile UK Recovery Fund, please visit fundcaliber.com.